Hi, I'm Peter Reinhardt, and welcome to the Johnson & Wales International Symposium on Bread. I'm coming to you from the Hans Auditorium in Charlotte, North Carolina, where we've held the last four bread symposiums. And as you can see, there's nobody here but me. And this is where we usually have it. The seats are all empty because this year, thanks to you, the symposium will be presented online, virtually, in our new presentation hall, which is where I will join you in just a minute. Thank you, and thanks for being part of our new virtual Johnson & Wales International Symposium on Bread, presented by Puranos. Welcome again. Throughout the entire symposium, I'll be thanking our generous sponsors over and over again, and ask that you do as well by visiting their booths and pavilions in the Exhibitor Hall. There you will see lots of bonus content and you can also make appointments to meet with the folks from these companies that serve our baking community so well. Our presenting sponsor is Puratos, who has partnered with us from the very beginning for all of our symposiums. And it is their support that helped us get this one of a kind gathering of thought leaders off the ground. Please also visit our fabulous flour and milling sponsors, Ardent Mills. Lindley Mills, and Central Milling. Thank you also to our equipment sponsors, the WP Bakery Group, an allied bakery and food service equipment. And thank you also to our specialty food product companies, ProBioTeam, Fire Within, Big Green Egg, and Mock Mill. Please check out all of their booths to learn about their wonderful and unique products. And also thanks to our media sponsors, Cook's Country, The Local Palette, The James Beard Foundation, and The Bread Bakers Guild of America. You'll be hearing more about all of them throughout the entire series of presentations. So again, thank you to all our sponsors. At the end of today's presentation, you will also see our credit scroll thanking all of the people behind the scenes who made this event possible, including our production and technical partner, Ganoid Communications, our creative team at Gumbo Marketing, and the many folks at Johnson & Wales University, our hosts for this, our fourth annual gathering. So stick around if you will. But now it's time to get things rolling with today's presentation. So let's go live and once again, Welcome to the Johnson & Wales International Symposium on Bread, presented by Puratos. Hello, hello, hello. And uh, yes, welcome. I'm live now. Uh, and I'm sit coming to you from uh, my home office. It's uh, hot here in Charlotte, as I'm sure it must be in many other places that are watching, although some of you in the Southern Hemisphere may be having a different kind of weather than we're having here. But I want to welcome you back. We're now into our fifth week of the symposium. We're really off and running. And um, we have an, an exciting presentation today from uh, Sebastian Vessels from the WP Bakery Group, who will be joining us in just a moment. Uh, but before he does, I have a couple of announcements that I want to make just to kind of uh, bring you up to date. We are one week away from having our first spin the wheel drawing for the, the door prize. And of course, this the, the prize that we'll be offering this first week uh, is this knife from uh, Henkel's, uh, we, we, they have a name for this particular knife. It's really, uh, it's called the uh, uh, oh, Friodium. It's a, it's a, it's more, I feel like it's more like a sword. I love it, but it's a bread knife and, and it's a, it's the uh, Zwilling Henkel's um, in their catalog, they just call it their bread knife, but it's a big knife. And um, uh, we'll be giving this away and I'll be sending it to whoever's name comes up. But in order to be eligible for the drawing, you need to visit the sponsor booths and sign the guest books in each of the booths. If you sign at least three of those books, you become eligible for the first week's drawing. Next month, we'll repeat this each month, and we're going to up the number of booths that you need to visit. So if you visited more than three and you're up to five or six, you're probably going to be eligible already for the second drawing. 
And eventually, by the by the end, we're going to expect that you sign in in all the booths in order to be eligible for the final drawing, which will happen more like September or October. So I just want to remind you to do that if you'd like to be eligible. We'll, we'll spin the wheel next week, uh, next Monday, either before or after the presentation. And speaking of presentations, so uh, of course this Wednesday we want you to come back for the demonstration, the Bake Like a Pro Wednesday uh, sessions, in which Edan Leshnik of Bread's Bakery will be baking uh, and showing us how to make the famous Bread's chocolate babka. That's this coming Wednesday. Next week, Stephen Bloom will join us. We're kind of moving into a technology track. So this week we're getting into tech baking technology. Next week, we're gonna continue that baking technology. Stephen Bloom of the Allied Bakery Group will be doing a presentation called, It's All About the Thermal Mass. And we'll be learning a lot about uh, thermal, just not only thermal mass, but how, how uh, thermal oil works and things like that. It's going to be very interesting. Uh, and then following that, following Wednesday, uh, Daisy Chow will join us from Massachusetts from her bakery in which she's going to show us how to make uh, destination worthy croissants using high extraction flour. So this is kind of a, a, a new little advance. We're seeing a theme emerge through a lot of the presentations about high extraction flour and how a lot of bakers are moving to it, which as Nikki Justo explained to us during his demo, you know, refers to the ash content, how much ash is in that, in, in that flour uh, to determine whether it's considered high extraction flour or not or type 85 or all the different names that they have for it. Um, and so we're gonna, we're gonna um, get into that the following. And then of course, the whole month of July follows lots more presentations to come. So just check the schedule on the homepage see what's coming and check the dates that you want. And if you miss anything, don't forget to go to the archives. And um, yeah, and I think that's a, that those are pretty much all the announcements uh, that I can think of for today. Uh, and I will, I'm gonna open up my chat line here. So if anybody has any things to say along the way, uh, please let us know. And, um, and now what I'm gonna do is turn this over to uh, Pat Patricia Kennedy, Pat Kennedy uh, of WP Kemper. Uh, who's going to be coming to us through a pre-recorded message. And actually, the first 15 minutes today are totally pre-recorded. Sebastian is on, uh, standing by to go live for Q&A, but uh, he and Patricia pre-recorded the, the formal presentation, which will go for about 15 minutes, and then we will return back here live for Q&A. So we'll see you in, we'll stay on now, but I will see you in 15 minutes and enjoy the presentation. Every morning, just as we wake up, thousands of bakers around the world end their night shift. So our day can begin with good bread. Hello, my name is Patricia Kennedy, and I am the president and CEO of WP Bakery Group USA. We are so proud and honored to be part of this year's Bread Symposium. And thank you to Peter Reinhardt for all of his efforts along with the team here to make this happen for our industry. Today, we would like to share some of our recent innovations with you within one of our brands, WP Kemper. Kemper is one of the five leading brands under the WP umbrella, and all of these brands are well over 100 years and have been strong leaders in the baking industry with technological developments that are staples today in every bakery. Innovation is the highest value in our group. And today you will learn about our developments in mixing and low stress dividing makeup lines that are quite revolutionary. As bakeries grow, the biggest challenge is replication. You can't always have your highest qualified baker at the mixer touching the dough and having that skilled magic touch to determine when the dough is really ready. And when inconsistent doughs flow through the process, it causes downtime, poor quality, and great losses. Presenting these new developments is Sebastian Vessels, our chief engineer responsible for all new developments and engineering at our Kemper factory. He has been with Kemper since 1997 and has worked in different areas of the company since then. 
After studying mechanical engineering, he first worked as a development engineer in the area of mixing technology and in 2012 became responsible for the entire design department, creating customer specific solutions to the complete to complete turnkey solutions. So now I am so pleased to introduce you to my colleague, Sebastian Vessels. Thank you, Patricia, for this uh, nice words for the beginning and also a warm welcome here from uh, our test center from WB Kemper in Germany. Uh, my name is Sebastian Wessels. Uh, I'm responsible for the engineering department at WP Kemper. And I would like to uh, show you today how we could, or how our idea is for the future of bread. And um, with our new solutions, with our new digital solutions, how we could support you as a baker uh, to uh, produce nice breads every day in the same quality. And uh, very important for us is um, that you have an overview about, about the complete process in the bakery. And especially if you look in our overview, um, that you see that we have a WP Bakery Group. We are taking care on the complete process from mixing, about dividing, about proving and baking to a final product. And today I would show you, uh, uh, explain a little bit more about the first steps in this process. Um, I want to explain a little bit more about our Kronos Digital. It's our, our first uh, smart machine, what we have developed and what is new, uh, now available on the market. And later on, I would also to uh, explain a little bit more about the um, panel line. It's our stress-free divider where we can also uh, create very nice artisan rolls and breads. And what was our idea to develop an, a smart mixer, a smart machine? And what we have learned in the last years is that our benefit or the benefit of the machine should be that we support our customers, our bakers to come every day to the same quality for his products. And um, today the machines are really uh, depends on the people who are working on the machine if you get a high quality or a not so good quality. And now we um, de get come to the next level of machines and we developed a lot of sensors and uh, technologies and controls and software um, that we support you as a baker uh, to come every time to the same quality. It doesn't matter who is working on the machine and who is uh, working in that shift that you get every time about the complete day the same uh, quality. And, um, you see it here on, on my right side. This is uh, the Kronos Digital and I will explain a little bit more about this. Uh, from the basic, uh, we are working uh, with a spiral mixer and this spiral mixer uh, is a single spiral mixer with a guide bar in the middle. So this is how we are producing normal mixers for the last uh, 60, 70 years. And the special on this um, uh, single spiral mixer is that we have a three zone mixing principle. That means we have a, a mixing area where the spiral is kneading the dough very, very uh, on the point and then we have a resting zone and in the center uh, we have a, a, yeah, a tube where we get a lot of oxygen into the mixing process so that we get really nice and dry doughs. And this mixing principle we have developed now and we developed this to a smart mixer to the Kronos Digital. And this smart mixer works completely different than all the mixers before because this mixer is not working especially only after the time that you say so many seconds a minute slow and so many seconds or minutes fast. So this mixer is working after a mixing curve and that means that you are uh, define the character of your dough and the mixer takes care by himself or itself on to, to, to achieve, to arrive every time the same uh, point on the mixing curve. And uh, I will show you just a picture how it looks. And um, this is um, uh, a picture of the Kronos Digital where you see all the curves on the display. And this is in real time. So we are taking curve on the energy, what is going into the dough. We are taking care on the, on the on temperature curve. And we have uh, especially a stiffness and viscosity um, uh, curve, what we are also using to, uh, to define or to check the quality in, in real time. And this machine is learning for each recipe a reference curve. 
and this reference curve we compare or we are looking that we are on the right way uh, to achieve the right result of mixing and uh, every mixing curve you know it you have a, a, a top point of the curve where you have the most resistant where the gluten has worked very well and when you say I want to have my dough mixed on this point to have the best quality we are reaching this point or you say no I want to have a little bit more over mixed to have a more relaxed dough or I want to have a dough what is in front of this point because I get a lot of mechanical work on the line. And this property is what you define. The machine takes care and is looking every time fully automatically to come back to this point on the mixing curve. And you only put um, in the recipe the amount of dough what is in the recipe and what type of dough you want to have and what point you want to achieve in the mixing curve and then you only push the start button and the rest the machine will take care by itself to come every time to the same quality of mixing. And this is, uh, we call it smart mixer, this is our first idea how we handle this in, uh, in our next generation of machines. And also very, very good and what we are liking or, or the first customers who are using this machine like this very much is that they get more information also for the quality department. That means like the stiffness or the viscosity of this dough it's also very important that you can go back and say, okay, today I see my quality in my shop and I want to achieve more, I want to increase my quality, then I can go back in the morning and I can look all my curves because they were stored on the database, they were stored on the external server and you get access and you can see and you can look how was my dough in the morning and to compare this with my result in the evening in the shop or in the afternoon in the shop or in the next day in the shop. And um, this is also very, very important. And if we are talking about the future of bread, this mixer, of course, is only a starting point. Yeah. In the end, you need, of course, to take care on the complete process. And to come to, a, to get a connection, we think that we need an above computer system where you have stored this information. And we will take care that the information will transport from our mixer into the makeup line, into the divider or into the stress-free divider. And uh, all our bowls have also RFID chips, uh, sensors, and um, also after the mixing process, you need a certain resting time, especially for high quality baguettes or chia butters. You need a long resting time, fermentation time also for the, for the ready dough. And uh, with this RFID chips, we have also um, uh, the possibility to check that the timing, the process in your bakery is every time the right one and you are exactly on the point uh, with all these resting times. And this is also the connection what we think is also important to come from the process of um, mixing to the process of dividing. And now I will change a little bit the place here in our test center and then you will also have a small overview of what we can all do. So we have a lot of mixers and now I will go to the next area where I have also all my uh, dividing process. Uh, now I come back to the other side and now you see me in front of our panel line. And uh, this panel line um, is one of uh, our typical stress-free divider. Uh, what is one of the most selling machines in artisan bakeries um, where we also get uh, in the next level uh, a digital version of this uh, uh, panel line we, uh, and we call it uh, WP Connect for example. Uh, we have also um, here the first sensors implemented and we get information from the scaling system, from the sensors in the, in the roller system and also this information are now available. You can see it and uh, I will show you now a screen. You can see it on your uh, mobile phone, on your tablet, on your computer. You can have every time access to the machine and you see every time in real time the condition of this machine. And this helps you also to come every time to the same result, to the same quality of, of high product quality. And um, here we have a sample of a stress-free divider. Um, the bowl lifter will take the bowl from the Kronos Digital um, with the RFID chip. He will put the bowl into the lifter and the lifter will ask in the above computer system, 
Is this uh, bowl ready for tipping? Is it the right resting time? Is it the right recipe? Is it the right dough inside this bowl? And if the computer system, yes, this is the right bowl, everything is correct, then the lifter will empty uh, the bowl into the hopper of the stress-free divider. And then we are starting and work with this uh, machine and producing baguettes or chia butter or whatever of, of high quality breads. And this is for us the future, um, as I have explained maybe, that we get all this information about the complete process and all the machines will support you um, to come every time to the same result, independent from the people who are working on the machine. And we think this uh, could be our, uh, yeah, our part or our benefit for the future of bread. And uh, I'm looking forward to come in a good discussion uh, later on with you now in this uh, symposium for Brett. And uh, of course, we also would be very, very happy if some people from you come over uh, and fly over to Germany and visit us here in our test center and uh, bring your recipes, bring your products and uh, we try everything uh, to come to the best results. Uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, uh, have a good rest of this symposium and I'm looking forward for a good discussion with you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sebastian. And thank all of you for joining us and taking interest in looking toward the future and keeping well informed of new developments. I've learned that innovation is the most important activity in any business. And in these times, things are moving incredibly fast so it is more important than ever to be informed. We see the future in bread production to be in developing technology with the complete process in mind to achieve maximum quality and maximum sellable products. Having technology like this truly provides solutions to one of the biggest challenges in the bakery, having everyday same quality independent of the people operating the machines. We wish all of you a successful and informative bread symposium and thank you again for your time. So now we're, we're live again. Um, thank you, uh, Patricia. Thank you, Sebastian. And Sebastian, we want to have you <coughs> join the conversation here. So uh, we'll put your camera on. Yeah, there you go. And um, maybe we can, we'll talk, to, we'll just chat a little bit about some of the things that I noticed there, give some context to this um, presentation that you made. And then what I'd love to do is invite all of you to start uh, sending your questions and you can use the Q&A button, probably be the best way to form your, to uh, convey your questions to me. Uh, if you have any comments you wanna make on the side in the chat, uh, you can put them there as well. And I'll look for, I'll look in both places for your, your questions. But, um, you know, one of the reasons why we wanted to have this this technology um, uh, sort of path at the symposium where, where there's, you know, we, we talk a lot about craft here and we talk about product there and innovation here, but, but technology and innovation in technology is such a big part of, uh, of especially the notion of cr uh, presenting craft breads at scale. So I think that was the phrase that came out of an earlier symposium was craft at scale. And it seems like that what you were showing us today kind of addresses that, shows us that, you know, way, new ways in which, um, which your company in particular, but other companies are probably all coming up with their own way of trying to be able to feed the masses, you know, to produce a, a volumes of bread, but not at the sacrifice of quality. So that for the first time, people can eat essentially everywhere, high quality artisan caliber bread, uh, rather than, you uh, you know, just sort of the mass mass production bread that we grew up with. Would you say that that's sort of the goal here? Yeah, of course. I think it's it's one of the goals uh, to to come uh, to to help a, a lot of bakers to come to to a better quality, to a nearly nearly handmade quality. And uh, of, of course, this is what we we have learned and what we have learned in the last one hundred years. Uh, in all the discussions with our bakers, uh, with our customers, 
to to increase every time uh, uh, the, the quality of the bread um, and uh, we know it's easier for our customers to be successful on the market if they have a real good quality if they have a better quality than the neighbor bakers of course and um, we think uh, this is uh, the most important thing to be successful in the business for us as a producer of the machines as also for our customers who are producing breads for the customers when i had my bakery 30 some years ago um you know we had mixers and we had dividers and rounders and things like that all the, the standard equipment that many of the people who are watching have worked with or know of and of course many of our viewers today are not necessarily professional bakers but have been baking as serious enthusiasts but some of them move eventually went out of their own bakeries so um so anyway back then the options were similar to what they are now except that somehow you've taken these classic tools such as a mixer or a divider and a rounder and all those and taken them to another level can you go back let's go back to the the first part of the video today which was the uh the mixing system that you have what was the what's the innovation there that differentiates it from mixers as we as we've known them and 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 I assume that you're you're thinking this is going to be the the next generation of mixers for the world will embrace. So the, the biggest difference is not the mixing itself. So the mechanical way how we are mixing, how we are kneading the dough is, is the same. Of course, we developed a little bit the bearings and the motors about the last 60 years and got stronger and new type of, of motors. But the way how we bring the energy into the dough is still the same. It's a spiral and we are kneading between the spiral and the bowl. So we didn't change really the mechanical um, influence on the dough, but we are changing massive the control system of this mixer and uh, so that means that uh, we we put a sensor on the motor uh, the motor and the frequency converter get one unit and we get a real feedback uh, from the from the spiral about the motor into the converter and this converter uh, sends a signal directly into a, a very very fast and and strong computer system and then we are taking care on the signals and we we filter it and we can compare it with our reference curves this is very important for us that we that the machine has learned what what is the right quality what is the right way of mixing and then the machine is following this curve and we we compare it and this is maybe what a good bakers doing by itself when they're working in a bakery they are going next to the mixture putting with the hands into the dough and feeling and say, okay, a little bit more water, less, more mixing, less mixing. And we have learned that there are less and less people in the world who have this experience in all over the countries to come to good results. And more and more people are working in bakeries and they have never learned to be a baker, but they are working there. And uh, this is the reason why we think it's very important that our machine helps the baker of course it can never be a baker you need every time person who know what they're doing but the machine should help the people it sounds like like you built in some ai you know it's like this is the work the artificial intelligence is is meeting the craft you know experience but one of our, our followers asked the question how do you the users set the parameters for the mixer do you provide any references for each bread such as mentioned like a baguette a ciabatta or, and and how does the machine? And from what I'm getting is, you're saying the machine will recognize it's intelligent enough to recognize when it's meeting certain criteria or what it needs to meet the optimum version of that particular dough. But how do you set it? So the first thing is every time we're starting with zero, it's it's a green field, and you're starting the first time uh, with, with with your new recipe or with your recipe, and then we have a learning button. So you, you activate this learning button and uh, we are mixing it the first time we we, we like to over mix it a little bit so that we get a real picture of this curve and uh, then we we stop at the first door and, and say okay we, we this is a starting point for everything and then we are looking and say we need a real baker and say okay we want to have it normally stopped at that point and then we are going to the program and set okay on this curve I want to be on point, a little bit in front or a little bit above yeah, for the mixing point. And then we go to the second batch, to the third batch, and we still uh, have 
activated the learning button. And that means every new mix um, make a bef better reference curves. It get more smooth, it get more equal and get more precise. And then we are mixing maybe the first 10 batches and we have learned the machine for this 10 batches. And then we say, okay, this is what the machine should do. And after that, we only changing the recipes when you go from baguette to chia butter or whatever. And then we are always mixing the same way. And the machine also recognizes if something is wrong. And uh, then the machine is showing in the end of the mixing process or on, on the curve, you see there is a gap to my reference curve. It's more resistant, it's less resistant, and you come to a different energy level. And then you can decide it or the machine says, okay, the, the, the dough is mixed, but it's different than normal. It, uh, it feels different than it should. And please, all some people in the bakery who could decide what we should do with this dough or if we can use it or if we have to make a new one. And this is maybe the way how it helps. Of course, the machine cannot change the recipe. We cannot add water or we can not reduce water. So if, if something is wrong in the recipe or um, the ingredients have the right com not not the right combination. We, the machine cannot correct it, but the machine can help you and say, okay, better you don't use it and you don't bring it to the rest of the process and you waste the time of all the people and a lot of energy. But you can maybe uh, start directly with a new one and come to the right result. Well, um, so Esther S, <coughs> do you have sensors for each of the qu of quality that you mentioned, such as energy, stiffness, momentum? Are there sensors that determine that? And 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 when you and when you were saying that the, you do these sort of test bakes along the way, is that something that the owner of the new own, if you if I buy the machine, I'm doing those test bakes, or am I getting sort of a guidebook from you that that tells me what we've learned from our test bakes on what the presets could be for this this particular kind of dough? So in the first uh, moment, in this moment, if we are bringing the first machine into the market, of course, our, our own master baker are, are joining our customers to, to show them how to use it and to help them to get the first infeed. And uh, of course, we will also make uh, the modern way. We make tutorials, we make videos how to do it. Yeah, it's, if, if you have a smart mixer, you also need a smart selling process and a smart uh, teaching process for everything. Right. And um, but but at this moment we'll help for the starting point, of course, and then. Um, uh, it's, it's not so complicated. Yeah, you have some buttons with the learning buttons and so on. And if you have recognized how to do it, then you can do it without the manual. I see. So basically, once you have done these these practice these bakes, you've built up to uh, a, perhaps a template that you say, this is now the standard, the gold standard for this kind of dough. You can lock that in and yes. then the machine will remember, will, will, when you say, this is the bread we're making now, it will it will mix to those specifications. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And of course, it will also be changing about a year. Everybody knows this uh, because flora is changing about a year, especially in, 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 in the end of summer and beginning of, of uh, uh, September, October. The new flora is coming into the bakeries and uh, everything, the, the, the change, uh, the changing or the change for the recipes begins every time, every year for a new one, more water, less water, you right. need to define it new. And then also um, at our mixer, of course, you need to say, okay, I'm sorry, I need to delete this reference curve. I need to start again uh, because uh, the, the main material, the flower has maybe changed if it's not if it's no big difference from one year to the next year, of course, then you can go ahead. But it happens a good summer, a bad summer, a lot, lot of the sun and not so, or a lot of rain, whatever it has, happens to the to the flower, um, uh, you need to, to reset it and then you need to start again. And uh, this is also what we have learned. You cannot say in bakery A or at, in a bakery in the United States, you can say, okay, for this chia butter, this is a perfect curve and I will copy it and bring it to another bakery. It will never work because everybody has different raw materials. Everybody has different recipes and has different flora. And so um, this is the game for each baker and also for our machine in each bakery uh, to start at zero and help uh, each bakery with its own process. So when, when companies, when bakeries buy this equipment, you, you provide uh, a trained baker to show them how to use it and how to achieve the, the quality of bread that they're looking for. Uh, 
Uh, a question along this way in, in terms of craft comes in from Mike uh, Nolan. One, one of the features of the mixer is increased oxidation of the dough. Yet many baking books aimed at both home and professional bakers seem to treat oxidation as something to be minimized. When is oxidation a good thing? Uh, oxidation is, is for us, it's, it's um, to help to get a dry surface. Maybe this is the right word because of course, in a, in a 10 minutes mixing process, the oxidation of the flour, you cannot really influence or have not because the time is so short and we only have oxygen, the, the 21 percentage what is in the air because uh -huh. we get normal air. It's not in, that we bring in real oxygen, 100 percent oxygen to the dough. It's only the about the air, the 21 percent oxygen we get to the to the dough, um, but we get it up to the ground of the mixing bowl, about the complete height of the mixing bowl, and this helps us to create a dry dough with a dry surface after mixing, and um, this is very gentle for the rest of the of the process of the bakery. If you have a, not a sticky surface, a wet surface. So if you have a dry surface of, of, the, of the dough, because then you need less oil, less flour in the, in the dividing process and so on. And this is very important for us as a producer for machines for the complete process that we are starting with dry doughs, that we are working with less oil and less flour in the, in the, in the dividing area as necessary. So, uh, so I'm not sure totally if, uh, Mike, you can chime back in if you, uh, so, and, and Mike will probably has been joining us in the uh, VIP lounge afterwards where we can go where we can, he can be on the screen and speak. So maybe we can pursue that a little bit further. But if, if, if you have a follow up to that, Mike, send another Q&A into us uh, and I'll move on to the next question. Um, but it sounds like from what you're saying is is, is ox oxygenating the, the dough when you're mixing it is an important part of the process because it gets you the, the structure, the texture and the and 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 the the which the, the 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 touch the feel of the dough is is dependent on that to some extent is that a correct interpretation of what you just said? I think the the influence of what we're explaining with with um, with oxygen or is not that we're getting a complete different gluten network or something like this because. Uh, we know that uh, uh, oxygen is important for the developing of the gluten structure, but as I mentioned, I have 200 kilos, 300 kilos in the mixing bowl, and I have uh, and it's, um, um, only the 21 percent of oxygen what what is inside the air. So I think we we are not able to really um, get an influence of the gluten network and get a different uh, feeling of the dough. It's it's more that we're getting the dry surface. This is what it really helps um, with with the oxygen. And we get it about the complete level or from the complete height of the, of the mixing bowl. This is important for us. I think it's not so many oxygen in that short time that we get a real complete different dough. I think uh, there you need a, a different way to transport the oxygen. Well, let me take one more question on this cat and then we'll switch over to the other machine that you showed us, uh, you know, the, the, the shaping and, and rolling and the handling machine. Uh, but uh, Esther asks, what is the definition of artisan quality if this is the goal? How is it different for normal production from normal production bread? So I guess you know what we've been talking about is I, I used the phrase and you didn't necessarily, but I said, how do you create artisan quality bread but for, for, for at, at the scale of high production as opposed to what we're used to as as uh, production bread, what we call production bread here as in a negative sense. Um, but um, so I guess what it's a difficult question to ask because artisan itself is a word that's got a lot of it, it has a lot of baggage attached to it these days. It's been overused. It's become its own cliche. But what what would you to say is the definition of the the quality the art the quality that that you're see, seeking uh, as a result of applying this new technology to the mixing process? Uh, quality is every time very difficult because everybody has a different meaning and different feeling or whatever what is a good quality and and we say at, at the producer for machines a good quality is if the if our customer is successful with his products on the market and he can sell a lot of these products 
And uh, then he has the quality what he wants to have and he is successful on the market. And if we are talking about a good quality, every baker has a different meaning or a different feeling for what is a good quality. But what we really say, and we say maybe it's not good quality, or we say a certain quality, a successful quality. And if you have defined what you want to have, then our machine should help you to come every day to the same result and not better and not worse or whatever, every time the same. And uh, I think this is, is, is a big advantage uh, or could be a big advantage for the future. If it's easier for the, for the customers with all the influences of temperature and raw materials and whatever to come easily or easier to the same certain quality every day. And then they could be very successful on the market. And this is what we maybe say a good quality. So, so really, the, may, I think that the, my use of the word artist and maybe, uh, maybe th throwing it off because everyone has an image of what that means. But what you're really talking about is high quality bread and, and perhaps achieving the, the full potential of what a particular type of bread can be in its best expression, a baguette, a great baguette, whether it's handcrafted, because artisan and handcrafted is kind of are, are synonymous. So when, a lot of times we think of when someone says artisan bread, we think of a bread that's handcrafted and that it's beautiful. And then we and then we tend to not see that at the supermarket and the and the and the, and the bread call, you know, the bread aisles, because it's all just mass produced. So you're talking about kind of trying to create. Uh, and giving people the tools to create uh, a quality bread comparable to the best expression of what that bread can be. Uh, and again, I'm putting words in your mouth. Is that is that a, an accurate summation to say that's what you're really shooting for here? Yeah, I, I think so. And and especially we, we are delivering our machines all over the world. So in, in every country of the world, we're delivering machines. And especially if we're talking, for example, of baguettes, our neighbor country is France. <laughs> and if you go to France and you're talking about good baguettes, of course, they have developed this. It's their main product. Yeah. Or if you go to, to people uh, from Poland and talking about baguettes, so our other neighbors on the other side. Yeah. And um, everybody has a different feeling what is a good baguette. And uh, for every country, it gives a good quality and they are successful with this. And uh, so it, it depends really on the market, on the people, on the experience, um, what, what is a good quality or, or Kaiser Rolls, uh, our neighbors of the South, uh, Austrian, they are the developing people of Kaiser Rolls and you can find Kaiser Rolls all over the world in each country, but everybody or all products are a little bit different. They're looking a little bit different. They have a different taste, but it's um, always uh, the quality of what the people are successful. Kathy asks, uh, Kathy Lair asks, uh, if you have sensors to measure each quality, what, why can't this technology not also adjust for the difference in flour? Or can it? Can, the, can it adjust? Uh, or or does, does it adjust or does it give you the information you need so you can make the adjustments? We, we, we still working on it. We, we make a lot of trails to find an inline sensor for the flour. That means in that moment when the flour is dosing from uh, the silo into our mixer, that we're getting an inline sensor and he oh, Unfortunately, you broke up there for a second. What is inside um, uh, this? You're, uh, you're sick breaking up just a little bit. So the last, last paragraph that you said was a little choppy. Could you possibly repeat it? Ah, okay, okay. So, um, so I think we, we try to develop it in the meantime, an inline sensor for flora. That means that we have in the pipe from the, from the silo to the mixer, an inline sensor, and uh, to give us information about the, uh, the moistness of the flora, or it gives us information about the gluten structure of the, of the raw material. And then of course, and this is maybe the idea of, of industry 4.0, if we're getting an information in the infeed for our mixing process we can adjust our mixer perfectly because we know what we have to do but until today <laughs> we didn't find sensor who give us this information or are we, we the sensor is so slow that we have mixed and have baked breads before we get information from the 
um, uh, from the from the sensor, but it's very difficult. And this is the job for the next years right. that you get on the right points on the process the right information. And in some points of the process, we we have find information, so we have a way to get this information. Also, if I'm talking about the sensor for the dough. It's not a direct sensor. It's an indirect sensor about the motor, about the curve, uh, uh, the torque curve. And maybe also in other process with information about the behavior of our machines. Uh -huh. And um, so we, we are looking for this. And until now, it's it would be very good if we are finding a sensor for Flora to get information in the infeed of our process, but we didn't find it until today. But we know that based on what you're telling us that, that the future of bread has come as the, the new future is already here in the terms of what you currently have this new this new uh, AI meets you know craft technology and that the next step maybe another couple of years down the road would be additional sensors equipment that can add even more knowledge and more intelligence to the process including stressing the testing the, the tolerances of the flour and things like that so so that's where we're we're headed. That's and that's why we always like to say this symposium is about the future of bread, is that you know we can project where we can see where we're what we've already accomplished along that way, and then we have to kind of take a leap of faith and say, okay, now nah, here here's and when we regather three to five years from now, we should be able to see this added to the to the mix. So let's let's switch over for a second to the stress free handling equipment. Uh, how does that work? How does that um, questions come in? Um, uh, what what does it mean and aim for? What the stress-free handling equipment? So stress-free means for us that we we have as less tension to the dough as as necessary. That means a stress-free divider is is a, a dough sheeting line. So we have star rollers and we we are start to create a, a dough belt and continuous dough belt, and then we are forming this continuous dough belt with a roller system. With a sensor controlled uh, a roller system with a special uh, double S curve uh, to get to create a long way and a big surface and a lot of rollers and small steps to come to the right thickness, um, to the right height of the dough belt. And then we are cutting in length and we are cutting in, in, uh, in, in, in the other direction so that we are getting squared dough pieces. And we have a scaling system before we're cutting it. And this scaling system is checking the, the weight of the dough belt when it's coming to the knives. And uh, this uh, scaling system say, okay, it must be a little bit longer or a bit shorter to come to the right weight. And so we have not so many pressure on the on the on the dough. So we if we have a developing, if we have nice air bubbles inside, we keep it inside, and then we are cutting it only. And uh, this is uh, our way of, of stress-free dividing. And after that, we can make a lot of different shapes. It starts from rounding, slightly rounding, or long molding, or go ahead squared, or we are cutting a diamond, or we are cutting a triangle uh, product. So then we have different cutting tools. And But important for us is not with a high pressure into a small volume piston, like a volume uh, divider. So it's a stress-free divider by creating a dough belt and cutting. The, the products. I remember when stress-free systems came into, you know, the marketplace uh, maybe 20 some years ago, and it was such a big breakthrough, so innovative that, that, that these wet, soft, sticky doughs could be handled, you know, uh, without, without gunking up the machine. So how is this new generation of stress-free handling that you're, that you're developing now, what advances has that, have you made over this, the original stress-free systems? Of 20 years ago so for us one small thing what is very important for us is we we are working more with flour and less with oil and the original stress free divider they work 100 percent with oil and this was very easy because then you have avoid to stick that the product are sticking on the surface on the knives or whatever but you had a lot of oil on the surface of the products and um, oil is, is is okay but it's it's very successful for 
uh, keeping to if you to start to make around bread then it's still open inside because you have too much oil uh, enclosures or oil inside as uh, a product and this is one thing what we say okay we want to go to more flour because this is a more natural or more handcraft style and you get a nicer surface or crust of the product so this is one thing only from the way how to handle the dough and um, uh, of course it's developing in in um in the uh, we call it sensor so that means the roller system they, we have distance sensors from each side of the roller system and we every time looking if we have enough dough inside our roller system or if we have too much or not enough dough inside and then the motors on the belts before the sensor they get accelerate or break so that we get every time the same thickness and that we have every time this right uh, filling of our roller system and uh, so that we get also independent from the people with the adjustments because the machine takes care that we have every time the right volume of, of dough and the right process and uh, then we have the scale and then we come to the cutting and uh, the next step for us will be um, uh, uh, what we are, are still working on is so if we're looking into the future <laughs> is that we have a camera system uh, behind our um, dividing process so that we um, get a feedback about the shape about the real length about the height and whatever so that we get a, we call it maybe shape control um, uh, for the divider and uh, that we get in the first step only a, a feedback if it's correct or not correct and if we need to react or people need to react and in the next step of course that we get an automatic circle and say okay it's too long it's too short it's not right for the packaging or it's not uh, not right for the specs uh, of the of the product uh, we need to react and this is maybe also the next sensor what we try to use for for um, uh, the dividing process of bread interesting um yeah because because uh, one of the things that your sensors can do is almost it sounds like you i heard you say that it can actually weigh out the pieces it, it can give you it can go it goes by weight rather than volume that was one thing i remember from the previous systems were always based on volume and size rather than by actual weight how does you, how do you, these sensors actually weigh these these small subsections of the dough we have a very small area so it's only maybe five or, or eight millimeters of the dough belt so that we get a really good feeling if we have changes if we have a lot of air bubbles inside if we have uh, uh, less specific weight in that moment or a high specific weight in that moment in that area of the dough piece and then we make a virtual we, we call it a virtual cut in that moment where the uh, uh, dough piece are entering or passing the, the scaling system and uh, then we are coming to the real cutting device and then we are cutting not every time after the same time we are cutting after the length what the scaling system has uh, defined and that means one product is 100 millimeter and the next one is 104 and then 102 and 100 whatever so coming very very uh, close to the same weight for all the products but stress-free and uh, this is the way how our scaling system is working so this has been like a, a little a little peek into two aspects of the technology, the baking technology world. Uh, before we run out of time, can you um, expand our view now a little bit? What are some other things that we should be looking for uh, down the road um, you know, as we end, continue into this future uh, uh, without, without revealing any trade secrets that you're not allowed to tell us about what your company's working on, but things that, that we should be thinking are, are other innovations that will be coming that will make baking uh, to scale uh, more possible? I think the, the, the first thing is, of course, for the, for the bakeries or for our customers is, they, is that they maybe need to think about the structure. Uh-oh, your, your, your screen froze area everybody has an, uh, a server system have a cloud and all our photos everything is stored everywhere and and it's very you have access to all this information from everywhere in the world and so on 
And I think people need to think also about the structure for the bakery. That means if our machine starts to create information about the quality of the product, stiffness, viscosity, temperatures, energies, uh, whatever, um, mm -hmm. and all this information, if we are able to store this in the bakery and the baker in the end, in the end of the, of the production day, he can sit in his office and say, okay, how was my day? Yeah, uh, then you can really go and, and can check uh, the facts of, of how it was really and is there a big difference in um, resting times or whatever and uh, I think this infrastructure is something what the people in the bakery need to prepare and uh, because I think we will not be the only producer from machines who will go for this technology and uh, of course in, in, in the future as today you have machine from producer A and you have machine from producer B and whatever and the oven from C and uh, to come all information you need some point in the bakery where all the information coming together we, we have as I have maybe mentioned an above computer system and uh, this could be also maybe an independent computer system because there are so many experts today for uh, analytic of data or whatever. And I think a lot of our customers, they have computer systems for the selling process. Uh, they have customer relationshiping, whatever software. And so I think this the structure you know, for the information, how to store and how to work with the information is something where also the bakers should uh, have um, to think about. That's a good one. So it's basically collecting, uh, collecting as, as much useful information as possible, uh, organizing it, uh, storing it, analyzing it, and then being able to record that and store it so that you can actually apply it um, in your next round. Well, this is a this is a start. It's a start for us into the future. And in, in an hour, we can't really you know, open up the entire future, but it sure has, uh, you know, kind of opened a window for us to see into it a little bit. Um, and this notion of information and intelligence being applied through equipment in a way to, again, just bring about better, more consistent, higher quality bread um, and, uh, and to make also the baker's life a little bit easier as well. Um, uh, and, and I think you pointed out something really important that we'll be exploring in future sessions on the, in the symposium is, is the workers, the people out there, the skilled workers, where are they and how do we, how do we bring them in and how do we train them you know, to be able to step into this industry? So what I'm going to do right now, since we're almost at the end of our hour, uh, I'm going to say, suggest we take a, a, a very short break, maybe a five-minute break. Um, uh, those of you who are, have a VIP ticket, rejoin us in the VIP lounge. Many of you already know how to do it. If you have the ticket but haven't done it yet, uh, you'll need to uh, uh, you know, go over to that room, the VIP lounge. Uh, Sebastian and I, we need to log out and then log back into the special link that we have so that we can get back into the, into the VIP lounge. And um, why don't we uh, plan to meet in just a few minutes? I would suggest also one final thing. If you have any more questions for Sebastian that hasn't gotten, haven't gotten asked, Go to the WP Bakery Group booth in in our in our uh, you know, sponsor hall in our in, in our information hall. Uh, go to their booth. If you haven't signed their guest book, sign the guest book so you can become eligible for the prize. But also, uh, you leave messages there. You know, communicate and and uh, uh, send your questions on and continue to keep the dialogue alive. You can also get his his uh, direct contact information off of our uh, dashboard. Uh, so use use those tools. Uh, to stay in touch and do follow-up questions. But thank you, Sebastian, so much for joining us for this hour, for making that video for us, and also for uh, sharing your knowledge. And we will see you back in five minutes in the VIP hall, okay? Okay, thank you very much. And thank you, everybody. We'll see you on uh, Wednesday. If, if, you, if you are leaving us now, come back Wednesday for the chocolate babka demonstration. That should be fun. And uh, otherwise, I'll see you in the VIP hall. Thanks. And uh, stay tuned for, we've got a little credit scroll if you want to see the name, just the, uh, most of you have heard it, but the names are coming.
thank you to our team behind the scenes. Our event technical and production partners, Ganoid Communications, including our producer, Gurmit Singh, and his team, Jida Gajaria, Gagandeep Singh, and Jaydev Kashari. Thanks also to Ted Nelson and Lael Fretzel of our creative and marketing team at Gumbo Marketing, and the many folks at Johnson & Wales University who supported me throughout this event. My executive assistant, Sarah Standifer, communications director, Melinda Law, Chancellor Mim Rooney, Charlotte campus president, Cheryl Richards, and our executive team leaders, deans and faculty, Maureen Dumas, Michael Schrader, Michelle Nicholas, Mark Norman, Brent Steyerwalt, Laurie Heinbach, Jerry Lanuza, Amy Felder, Harry Paymiller, Richard Miskovich, and many, many others. Thank you all. <laughs>